uh, and just let's discuss i mean uh, uh, if you have understood what exactly is robotics robotics all about so please interact please ask questions if you have yeah zubin pervez sagar sagar Actually Yes, Parvez. Uh, is it an open source or we need to buy this software? Yeah, we have both uh, open source and uh, commercial platforms for implementing RPA. Automation, okay. automation anywhere, but most of them are uh, uh, commercial. I mean to say automation anywhere, Blue Prism, even Pega is uh, uh, a commercial version. Work Fusion is is open source these guys are very early in the market early in the market in the sense uh, they just got launched uh, in this march and you have ui path studio when it comes to the licensing uh, model i would say this is the cheapest version ui path is much cheaper when compared to automation anywhere and blue prism in terms of robustness i mean to say uh, these two platforms i mean automation anywhere and blue prism are the best in the market as of now yeah does that answer your question parvez yeah uh, yes sir yeah yeah um, ravikant we also have satya i guess satya is yeah satya. yeah yes satya tell me if you have understood uh, what is rp about What uh, what I understood about RPA? Yeah. Uh, it is an automation tool. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes, Satya. Okay. Uh, let me give a quick recap of last session. Uh, RPA. RPA is a practice in IT industry. So automation anywhere or Blue Prism uh, are the platforms to implement RPA. So what exactly we mean by robotics process automation? We mean that once we implement RPA in IT, we are creating digital workforce. So that should be the end motto. So yesterday we discussed, yes. So one liner, one liner for RPA would be creating digital workforce. We are actually creating digital workforce in RPA. That 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 would be the one liner answer for RPA as a practice. Okay. So once we say digital workforce, here we are referring to a base model. The base model is you itself. I mean to say your human brain. So we see human human workforce everywhere. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, Ravi. Ravi, you have a question? Uh, no, no, Kiran. Yeah, uh, please be on mute. So while in session, if you don't have a question, please be on mute. If you have a question, please message in the chat box. I will answer your questions. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So what I mean to say is, uh, intention of this platform is to create digital workforce, and the base model what we have to create digital workforce is human itself, understanding the characteristics and the skills of human, which are leveraged on our IT skill set or our enterprise applications, are being mimicked using one of these platforms to create digital workforce this is this is the whole agenda about so in this course we will be learning two tools why i have chosen two tools there is a reason for that uh, automation anywhere creates bots or digital workforce using a wizard driven environment when it comes to blue prism Blue Prism creates the digital workforce taking process as an input. 
so we are doing the same thing in two ways we are creating digital workforce we are creating bots using two different platforms i mean approaches are different so our advantage for you will be if you if you actually see any other platform also i mean to say if you check with pega <coughs> pega is also a, a platform wherein it has it has come up with a product called open span which it recently bought and in open span also you will see that uh, they i mean this will be at the end of the session wherein i will show you the screens of other platforms here it will be a rule based i mean to say a process will be given as an input and it will develop a bot for you <coughs> so either you will have a wizard driven environment or it will be a process driven environment process or a workflow driven driven environment we have to tell give a workflow to this systems and then the end result will be a bot which is which is created so that is that is the reason why i have chosen two different platforms automation anywhere and blue prism so if you if you get hands on on automation anywhere and blue prism probably you can create digital workforce for yourself so digital workforce yesterday we have discussed that it will have characteristics like human beings once you create digital workforce they have to be scheduled on our jobs like how we get scheduled in our offices we go from probably 9 to 5 so same thing you can expect it out of uh, digital workforce in our enterprises uh, like human uh, resources how they monitor us our performance or the task how we are allocated similar way you will be allocating tasks and monitoring the performance of a individual bot or your digital workforce so in when it comes to the comparison matrix we are trying to understand our features and trying to implement the same thing and create bots so bots are software scripts bots are nothing but software scripts which are virtual robots are something which you see in action in real time so bots work as a virtual digital workforce uh, catering our it needs in i mean it, it can be applied to any segment in it any vertical in it so it is all about it so now what i will do is uh, we will be actually seeing uh, what exactly we are going to do in next 30 days how are we going ahead and what are the different uh, uh, what will happen to the videos where they will be stored how will you get the access for the software and things like that first of all i would want you to make a note of this number please make a note of this number those taking this class from united states you can probably call them in uh, indian standard time from 10 to 5 the reason why i'm giving that number is so he will take care the the installation part okay hardly you would be charging some 4 or 500 rupees but he will be taking care of the installation issues okay all these softwares as i said are commercial and um, and th they are not just readily available in the market however for installation of blue prism and automation anywhere i would recommend you to take this uh, take this uh, number okay those who are here in hyderabad can visit this place in person so no matter what whichever software you want you can actually call him he will he will be able to help you if you are remote i mean if you are somewhere then he will take control of your computer your team viewer or something and he will be able to install so please take that number secondly <clears throat> i have created a drive wherein you will have access to all the content and software itself i have from my end i have already given you the software in the drive and I'll, i have also given you the installation steps like when it comes to automation anywhere i'll just show you in a minute
so this is the folder automation anywhere i will share with this drive uh, details in our group so that you can access so and these are your class recordings where you will have you can find the earlier recordings i am not sure if i have shared with this did i share this uh, drive details with you guys i don't think so no yeah no yeah so you have the software here automation anywhere client 10.3 this is the latest uh, thing which is in the market but enterprises now are using 10.5 there are minute differences and you have control room 10.3 and you also have uh, the installation guide i mean to say i have i mean these are not given by automation anywhere we created it by ourselves you can just uh, download it it will have the screenshots different screenshots uh explaining how you need to install automation anywhere in your system so in spite of that if you face issue i have given that number please uh, contact this guy he will be able to assist you okay yeah so like that uh, not just that uh, i have also mentioned the course content here like what is what is that we will be learning in this uh, uh, course i mean to say Uh, automation anywhere what topics we will be covering okay and what all commands we will be learning you have a descriptive course content uh, available here you can it is available for your reference and on blue prism what is that we will be learning okay so this is how it is and uh, i have also included the industry's best practices which are available today i mean i have taken the examples from uh, white papers from two different companies one from wipro so wipro after uh, implementing rpa with many companies has come up with a standardized approach wherein uh, uh, wherein they could they could uh, uh, they could create a design process design process in the sense they have come up with a five step strategy for successful implementation of rpa okay uh, chandu charge what charge i mean how much how much does he charge is that what you want yes 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 yeah that guy will charge you some 500 rupees i guess 10 dollars 500 rupees not more than that yeah that you have to take that step just in case you have issues uh if you if you don't if you're not able to do by yourself i mean to say i have given the software i have given to i mean the control room and enterprise client you can download that and i have also given the installation manual okay uh, aa installation guide just in case if you are not able to do by yourself you please contact that number okay yeah so i have given uh, a design strategy i mean to say uh, design strategy of rpa like how exactly it is implemented in our organizations this is written by uh, deloitte i mean it's a three step progressive environment where we create bot so this is how it is in in by the end of the course uh, which would span over one month we would be doing one project one project in both the environments following these design principles okay so guys do you have any questions okay so once uh, the installation is done uh, you will see it can be installed on any windows environment so prerequisite would be i would recommend 8 gb ram that you can still you are good with the 4 gb as well so you will have a control room and automation anywhere client installed on your on your uh, desktop you should be able to see these two icons <clears throat> okay so first let's start with uh, automation anywhere control room as i said earlier control room is nothing but 
it is a place where you actually monitor your bots okay so you just need to make a database connection so once you install you will have this environment earlier in 9.0 release see 9.0 is the most uh, used release in automation anywhere so the 9.0 release was uh, without uh, a database support it was working as a standalone application so automation anywhere thought that we should have a sql server support so sql server 2014 and above is good those entire steps are mentioned in automation anywhere uh, installation guide once you are done with that you have to go and click on automation anywhere client so i today i will give you a brief introduction about the platform itself and how exactly it looks like and what are the what are the different features available here things like that yeah so it is just log into the control room So it comes with a 30 days trial. <coughs> Sorry, let it load. So your interface would be looking something like this. This is the area where you will be working in a real time which is called automation anywhere enterprise client okay and I'll quickly navigate through different screens here and this is called control room as the name says control room is a place where we control and manage different bots I mean to say you can expect the admin features to be on control room this is basically an admin I would say administration area for managing your digital workforce okay so this is the control room control room is a web-based application which has connected with your uh, .NET based instance which you just saw so once you once you click on control room this is what uh, you will see once you made a successful connection with the repository you can access the features of control room by yourself okay so it's like that it shows one registered client and two active users so let me introduce you the platform and this is the st uh, this is a standalone application I mean to say automation anywhere enterprise client this is where we create bots okay so let's start with the basic uh, funda I would want to introduce you to something called uh, license management which is very very important to know if you are working in teams okay see in license management typically we have two types of licenses development license and runtime license and in runtime license again you have options to choose whether you will be going with task bots IQ bots or meta bots okay uh, please understand that this is the selling strategy this is the selling strategy of automation anywhere you will see a similar strategy in uh, blue prism and other products as well what I mean by selling strategy is you can understand that uh, if I actually uh, go into an enterprise and start implementing RPI as a practice then what exactly I am trying to do I am trying to create digital workforce so what exactly I mean by digital workforce I will closely observe the organization and its processes for that matter I will understand the ITIL I, -T -I, -L. I will try to understand the ITIL of an organization let us say genpact calls you for
for implement to implement RPA. Then I visit GenPact and the first question what I ask before going ahead with RPA is what is your ITIL? <coughs> ITIL is the combination of software, hardware, people and processes which help in delivering a business process. Hope it is clear. So ITIL is nothing but it is the combination of software, hardware, people plus processes. Okay. So ITIL is everything about the software, hardware, people and processes which are used to, to do a business. I mean to say, let us take a typical example, uh, Amazon. Remove everything, remove these things from Amazon and they're from their business model. Remove software and hardware. Will they be able to do their business? Will they be able to do the business? Guys, make this session interactive, please. Yeah. No. Yeah. You should ask questions in between as well. I mean, if you have understood, that's great. But yeah. So what I, my point is, uh, an organization or all the businesses around today are heavily relying on the software and hardware. I mean to say software might be an ERP server, might, there, there might be some web servers, blade servers, physical servers, virtual servers, cloud applications, which are supporting the business processes of any organization. So as an RPA practitioner, your first agenda is to un understand what is the ITIL of that particular organization. On what softwares? Are these organizations relying to do their business? Once you understand this, then comes to the human part. And there we understand what are what is the human involvement on these business processes so that these businesses are running smooth. I mean, typical example like Amazon, you see a lot of human workforce. So we go ahead and try to inspect what is the role of which person and how is this person executing his skills on this software. And once we are very clear about it, then we try to understand what is the cost to company by keeping that person to do that process. So that's a cost to company. If somebody is hired, that's a cost to company. Then if at all we are trying to automate the process by eliminating that resource the first and foremost question is the rpa implemented yeah who is caller three caller three you have a question no no okay fine so what i was saying is the implementation cost of that human resource should be always less than the automation cost. Otherwise, there's no point in uh, creating an automation if the cost metrics are not met. Okay, that's the reason why I have uh, shown, I have shown you the licensing model of automation anywhere. Okay, those, uh, uh, please be on mute. Uh, if you have a question, unmute and ask. That's giving some disturbance. So in automation anywhere, the first reason why I've shown you the licensing model is depending on this uh, justification, we go ahead and start buying licenses. They are really expensive. I mean to say automation anywhere license for a, for a 10 license, they sell the licenses in pack is almost uh, a crore rupee in Indian currency. Almost a crore rupee in Indian currency. 
so this is quite expensive so if we are implementing robotic automation uh, rpa then we are actually what we are doing we are actually uh, uh, trying to understand what is the cost to company if the human himself is there if that is coming to a conclusion then i will say yes i will go ahead and buy five development licenses or three development licenses depending on my project costing so that's how the decisions are made uh, to brief about uh, the bots in last class i have told you that uh, bots are uh, system generated scripts i mean to say bots can be developed in any of the programming languages but each of the bot uh, has a type of uh, uh, what do you say responsibility when we are saying we are creating digital workforce we are actually creating these bots okay these bots are nothing but uh, software scripts okay they are of three types in nature in automation anywhere i would say they are task bot meta bot and iq bot as you have seen the licensing model so you should be in a situation to decide whether to go with task bot and meta bot or all of them or only task bot okay so what task bot does task bots are meant for repetitive tasks i mean if you are seeing a business flow which is being repeated uh, repeated every day let's say you are an organization wherein uh, uh, every day you will receive some 50 to 50000 emails and you are asked to send an email to all of these 50000 contacts so those are called repetitive tasks in a typical organization you are receiving some 1 lakh claims in a day all over the globe so there should be some human workforce which is actually processing these claims so these are repetitive tasks so once we identify repetitive tasks these tasks are automated by implementing task bots task bots also have a minimal intelligence i mean to say they are not intelligent i can't say that they are intelligent and you make a lot of uh, if else things i mean to say in pro from programming if you are from programming background we have if else blocks so uh, not much of intelligence works here but uh, basic logic can be built using the uh, task bots so apart from having a, a repetitive task our systems or our processes should be logical also so that is where we use task bots next comes the meta bots when do we use meta bots meta bots are a more sophisticated way of automation i mean to say uh, i mean to say you are doing the same task what the task bot does but the thing is the only the difference is you have additional capabilities in meta bots to automate the same process so we have our coding best practices in coding best practices and guidelines it is always told that try to keep the number of lines of your code uh, as I mean, minimize them as much as you can so that and try to write a clean code so when we come to meta or task but we definitely don't code here when we are writing actions we cannot span the actions over uh, 300 or 400 in number that is where you miss the logic and you get confused with process implementation however if you use meta bots instead of those 400 lines you can actually do it in 30 to 40 lines which is a more controlled way of automating i mean more beautiful way or more sophisticated way to automate the same process so understand the capabilities of metabot they are called app resilient and metabots are the building blocks of automation so when we have scalability as a promise we use metabots we see metabots in action and please understand there is a there is no 
uh, I mean to say you can buy you can you don't need to buy metabot and you can still do the same automation in task bots however the result is uh, is 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 a more uh, complex thing you are doing you are writing a lot of actions for the same uh, implementation and it gets we have a separate uh, designer studio wherein we create motorbots and same thing similar thing is iq bot but iq bot comes with uh, much more uh, uh, sophistication in terms of automation it has called artificial intelligence and cognitive learning capabilities so designing an iq bot uh, is very very easy so you can handle complex tasks you can handle complex workflows using iq bots iq bots are just not doing repetitive tasks they are also intelligent i mean to say the decision making capability uh, is already given to you as a library while working with iq bot however iq bot have to be purchased i mean to say it is all about the licenses so i have shown you i have shown you in uh, automation anywhere control room we have something called license management in license management based on the costing what the, what what i decide based on the project i'm coming here and uh, making a choice like how many licenses should i purchase for development for runtime in runtime i hope the classification is very clear like what task bots do and what iq bots do and what meta bots do so i uh, a task bots depending on the type of automation what i am doing i will choose iq bot licenses depending on the type of license what i have chosen uh, i have bought two runtime licenses wherein iq bot and meta bots are enabled okay i don't have uh, sorry task bots and meta bots are enabled iq bots are not enabled so these are uh, this is a selling strategy what automation anywhere follows so uh, that's about it guys so you have any questions you please ask in terms of uh, license more licensing so the given uh, software will that uh, license is applicable or how, what is that what are the driver you mentioned right the softwares pardon me no the softwares which you mentioned uh, in the drive will what kind of access to the task bots or uh, like uh, meta bots we will have, we will have i tried my best because uh, i tried my best so when we are talking in in perspective of automation anywhere we have access to we can see iq bots we can see task bots and meta bots not iq bots iq bots licenses are very very expensive but i will just quickly show you how they look like see if you come to this uh, development environment i will introduce you each and every icon in this if you come here and you can see that there are certain things called tasks tasks are having an extension of dot atmx so our regular work i'll quickly show you that uh, screen and later on we will try to understand each and every detail in in action so when i just go and create or edit an existing task i have a task editor which is open in a dedicated window see this is the client and this is the task editor so here you can understand that we are this is where you will be working this is where you will be creating task bots task bots are meant for <coughs> handling the repetitive task okay this is your work area okay and uh, you have to build your logic by coupling uh, the actions there are so many actions here like you can see open command line and then do something then do something and do something okay so uh, this is how we build the logic here however not all implementations uh, you can write in sequential actions for instance i have my requirement something like this i'll just delete uh,
okay so my requirement is something like this i'll just say open program file so it opens a wizard driven wizard wherein i can just write cmd <coughs> dot exe and just say save and i run the task don't worry guys i will tell you each and every icon on this i'm trying to give you a quick feel of the environment so it has opened the command line for me so i can once the command line is opened i can pass arguments to the command line i'm going to say i can i can do uh, i can i can do whatever you can do in command line i can tell automation anywhere to do the same thing i'll just demonstrate uh, a simple thing so once the command line is open uh, what exactly we do we type in to the command line so we can insert keystrokes so to insert keystroke it is asking me which uh, window i should actually type in i will just say uh, currently active window and let me see how many tries i have okay so i will first do this okay and i want to see the directory and clear the screen <coughs> now i want automation anywhere to do the same stuff so i would say cd dot dot and say enter okay and that is one command and i will copy and paste the same thing again and i will say so you are building your logic in this fashion i will say dir and say enter and say <coughs> so you can drag and drop your actions and build your logic this is just to give you a quick feel so after i understand the automation uh, probably i will go ahead and start building my task bots so it has done that so i can go ahead and start building my logic in a sequential order so i have conditions i have loops so whichever human action you can actually think about uh, while interacting with enterprise applications can be seen in this uh, commands list we call them as commands so this is how a task bot would be developed okay for instance i might have a requirement uh, wherein i create folders based on the time stamp i mean i wanted automation anywhere to create folder within a folder i mean let's say it has downloaded some content from web and i want them to be placed in a proper fashion here with a date and time stamp so i can tell the automation anywhere to do that okay so uh, it is also again a wizard driven environment i can just select all this i will say ignore this actions and i'll go ahead to the folders so it has basically got a folder view and a tree view i'll go to folders and i will tell automation anywhere to create a folder okay but when i say create a folder i should give the path of the folder where it is going to get created i'll just demonstrate for your reference so i say i create it in shravan but here please observe i use the capacity of uh, the variables in automation anywhere i want uh, 10 or uh, 20 folders to be created and i use something called a counter variable and i just say save and i will loop don't worry i am just showing you or demonstrating you this so that you will have quickly quick idea about what exactly we are going to learn in this course 
these are the commands and sub commands which we will be learning so i want these 20 folders to be created uh, to be created uh, in a uh, dy dynamic way i mean now i see that my folder is empty here so i'll try to watch the variable which i just created which i try to use <coughs> now i will run save <coughs> i'm sorry save and run as you see the counter value is changing and automation anywhere is creating folder <coughs> sorry is creating folders for you so this is how you create bots and it is left to your imagination what exactly you can do mm. yeah what if you want to create if, uh, folders in different different location you can do that you can do that so just disable things it is all up to you where you want to uh, how you want to create a, the logic okay so you can create folders anywhere on your desktop any 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 folder inside folder you, it's all about how you specify uh, a particular file path so it is asking you the file path okay i can copy from one source to destination i can just uh, create a folder i can rename a folder okay so things like that does that answer your question so we have to give each location at a time or yeah we can define it you can you can see always we don't uh, do fixed things i mean to say you don't know that your target system is having only five files or 10 files or, so it is all so in this course we'll be learning the same i mean we'll be learning to build a logic using the industry best practices so that uh, your automation is smooth i mean to say uh, there are certain practices how uh, things have to be implemented you can create for instance you can see here i have created 20 folders by one line command by using a variable called counter it's a step up and step down counter wherein the each time the values get incremented by one okay however there are more intuitive ways to do the same thing okay but in okay. This, but in this journey please don't forget because there is a chance to get deviated from the core concept itself as i said automation anywhere or automa robotic process automation is meant to create digital workforce we are not interested in building software or mobile applications or cloud applications we are interested only to create digital workforce why with that mindset we work on these particular platforms okay so like this we go ahead and start building different types of bots and implement them however uh, as i said uh, if you buy meta bots then you can do the same task with greater capabilities because they have given a different uh, designer studio wherein i can create my meta bots i'm not able to demonstrate iq bots because of the licensing issue it is very very expensive but you can understand that it would be a similar environment so this is my meta bot designer this is my task bot designer studio i mean this is where i create my task bots and if i understand that the, my automation logic is going way beyond i mean it's becoming more and more complex then that is when i decide to go ahead and purchase the task bot license once i have task bot license in place the um, type of automation what we do here is more intuitive intuitive in the sense <coughs> sorry guys yeah intuitive in the sense here 
there are certain organizations where they will never allow a third party application to work on their systems i mean to say if you go to a bank just take a typical example of city bank the banking application what they work on is a highly secured uh, environment for every type of authentication you have a token i mean rsa token which has to be keyed in which is a third party uh, thing i mean which is a, which is a abstracted uh, uh, authentication and according to their uh, compliance issues they will never allow softwares like blue prism and automation anywhere to automate automate process however they become they end up becoming your clients because of their automation interest in such cases when we don't have access to the third party applications but still we need to automate we use uh, this kind of strategy as i said uh, metabots are the building blocks of automation so here if the process is given as a, as screenshots i mean to say whichever process they are planning to automate if the process itself is given to you as screenshots then using metabots just with the screenshots we can build uh, the entire automation logic so that's how uh, metabots are different from taskbots taskbots if just a screenshot is given you can still automate in uh, using this uh, actions and commands however the length of your actions list will be more i mean to handle such a bot would be difficult because of because because you are teaching so many things uh, to that particular bot i mean so it might run to 300 to 400 lines handling that would be different instead doing that in metabot would be a advisable thing and let us say you want your bot to think and learn from experience that is where we implement uh, that is where we implement iq bot we will see that in action in blue prism while learning blue prism there's something called surface automation okay so that's how it is and i really don't know if uh, if you have seen some demos on blue prism on youtube i would recommend you to go there and do and today's video will also be available for your reference i will just quickly show the capability of uh, the blue prism i just found that video on youtube So this is uh, how yeah so you can see here uh, that it's a popular game uh, called step mania so we can actually get this interface with the computer so you have to press those uh, arrows as they come in okay so blue prism bot which is enabled with artificial intelligence and iq cognitive learning so the workflow as i said earlier this workflow is playing the game flawlessly so that's how it is with with perfect precision it is it is playing a video game you can write a bot to uh, play a video game like candy crush or subway surfer so what what is that we understand here bots are just not doing the repetitive task but they are also intelligent <coughs> so you want such capabilities so you have to go ahead and do surface automation and implement iq bots so that's how it is so guys that's all for today please ask any questions you have uh, so i have given you the software i have given you the software documents and i'll be sharing the videos of everyday class yeah please ask questions if you have
uh, how many bots uh, we can create using with the enterprise client we can create any number of bots however they are separated by the nature rather you should say how many types of bots rather saying how many types of bots i you should ask like how many bots we can create we can create any number of bots there is no limit for that however we have some licensing model okay it's you can visualize it as same as uh, let's say you have an office and you are hiring people so for your project how many people will you hire on what basis uh, you will make the decision it all depends on the scope of the project so now i say i will buy uh, two runtime licenses and one development license that means what what i mean by runtime licenses i can after creating bot i can only run this bots in two machines so that's what it means but in that machine how many bots i can run i can run any number of bots i can run any number of bots but uh, the will that license allow me to work on all the three types of bots like iq bot meta bot and task bot it will be a no so if you take the combination based on the combination you will be priced that's how it is okay any more questions can you please show as a glance about metabot as well yeah metabot we'll we'll see it in the next class ravi and one more question now you are using uh, automation and with tool so yeah. if you want to create any folder in my desktop yeah. so is there any chance to do that yeah that's what we did right no? but uh, it's in your local right you are giving you a local okay. path like Re remotely uh, you wanted see. to do okay remote Sorry. see see that is the this is a very intuitive way to handle uh, the process so your question is if i want to create some logic on a remote machine how do i do it right yeah yeah so the answer is you itself tell me how will you do it as a human how will you create folder on my desktop from your machine by logging into jump server using pardon me by using jump server okay jump server so whichever the strategy it is you take a rdp connection you will take a rdp connection of my machine once you get connected to my machine then you can probably start working on the machine right so this is the same way this is the same way you could do it uh, in automation anywhere so i first need to establish a connection between the remote machine once i connect to the remote machine then i start working on that remote machine so we have something called a terminal emulator we have something called terminal emulator to do such processes to do such activities yeah this is the one so that's how you have to ask the questions question is let's say i want your question was i want to create folders in a remote machine so answer would be as you as a human how will you interact with this machine to create a folder on the third party machine so you write all those steps and try to search for the actions each step is an action and try to search for those actions in this commands you will find it so that's how it is imagination is the limit you can you can think about anything and you can do it in i mean it's only up to windows automation and only up to windows uh, it is it is only supporting the microsoft platforms you can download a file you can upload a file you can do uh, what not you can extract pattern based data you can extract uh, um, data which is unstructured we can migrate data from one system to the other system we can do all that we can compare 
we have vision skills we can read text out of images we can compare images and things like that okay any more questions you have yeah one question one question just i just want to extend the same uh, his uh, question could not just creating a folder uh, just want to see what is the limitations of this one uh, on the remotely connections let's say maybe on a linux machine you do some commands or else in the remote uh, server you will open multiple applications hrm or something hmm. how what is, is the limit do we have any limit so limitation here would be limitation would be as long as you are inside windows environment if you are able to create or implement anything in windows environment those things can be automated using uh, automation anywhere automation anywhere or these products are not at uh, not at uh, fully functional on unix and linux machines so as long as okay. you are in windows you are good to go there's no limit there are certain best practices which we have to follow which we will be learning in this course but today's idea was to just show you how the system looks like yeah so satya is asking what is the final form of bot that looks like see final bot would look like final bot would look like a dot atmx file i have shown you close this slide if you come to us this is the final format of a bot which looks like gmail.atmx okay satya yeah okay uh, so any more questions please uh, uh, post it in the group i will answer them Okay, be prepared for the tomorrow's class. Chiran? Yes, Ravi. One last question from my end. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what, what is your intention uh, of choosing automation anywhere and blue prism as the training? Yeah, I have, I have told that in the beginning of my session. Uh, probably you have joined late. Yes. The, reason, the reason why I have chosen this combination is uh, automation anywhere is creating digital workforce in a wizard driven environment whereas uh, blue prism is doing the same work in a process driven environment so these are the only two options which are available as of now so either you have to choose a wizard driven environment or a process driven environment once we are very clear about these things then probably any other Uh, tool you work on you will have uh, you will easily you can get adapted once you see process driven and wizard driven so that's the idea basically okay and one more thing uh, using with the single bot uh, can we do uh, three different actions on three different systems yes of course using with the only single bot like uh, with the single step yes we can see uh, what i mean to say is reference is you itself just check if you can uh, do that if, if you if you if you can do that by yourself i mean to say can you do uh, can you uh, perform the same activity by some software applications wherein your expectation is to implement uh, one task and one task should simultaneously work on three different machines is it possible by any application yes it is possible okay we can ping three different ma machines in an asynchronous way there are hundreds of tools to do that so when a tool can do that automation can be done it's like that but my only question query is is that a windows machine or a linux machine if that is a windows machine yes i can go ahead and do it yeah
Does that answer your question? It's, yeah, it's yeah, like installing it. um, the location at the same time, right? Yeah. See, or, uh, I will give you a uh, example. Uh, if, if these guys say automation anywhere, they literally mean it. I mean to say, you can deploy a bot, you can create a bot and deploy it anywhere. You can deploy the bot on cloud. You can deploy a bot which is geographically separated. You can deploy over the continents, over the seas. Wherever you have internet, you can deploy it. Yeah. But, uh, and can you give the access for the Google Drive so that we can download and... Yeah, I will like post it, it in uh, the group and you can take it from there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks for taking my session. We'll catch up tomorrow, same time. Thanks, man. Thank you.